Hey what's up guys, I've finally moved on with Tiger. Today I'm gonna work mainly on the equipment and try to apply some scratches using chipping technique. I decided to cut out and prepare all the parts that were still in frames. Only the glass and the transparent elements will be left uh, till the end. As you can see the elements are cut and pre-sorted. Of course each part requires a bit of work with a knife and files. Some of them were pre-glued to prepare them for painting. Unfortunately, in the heat of battle I broke one of the antennas. Fortunately, it's an element that it's easy to make using unnecessary frames elements. A little bit of practice and it's very easy to get the thickness you want. I prepared other elements including a machine gun, grenade launcher and rims. After carefully filling the elements, I glued the tiger rims together, placing a rubber sleeve in each of them that will allow the wheel to rotate. The last part is the spare wheel frame and we can start painting. First, of course, primer. Invariably with this model it's butter Steinle Res Black. After the primer is dry it's time for colors. I've painted all the elements according to the instructions using Mr. Color Paints. I decided to paint the mirrors with a Molotov marker liquid chrome. I also painted the door handles with it and glued the elements with ultra glue. Before chipping I decided to paste a few elements such as antennas or reflectors.
I decided to change the antenna's appearance a bit. Using the Vallejo model color paints, I obtained a dark steel grey color and painted some parts. I used black liner to correct the mirrors and started painting the details. I've painted the equipment elements including saw, an axe, a shovel and a tow rope. Then I glue them to the appropriate places on the sides of the vehicle. I've also installed the antennas and moved on to chipping. Before I say something more about the technique, let's move on to paints. I've mainly used three Mr. Color paints which are Olive Drop, Dark Yellow and Steel. I've started with a lightened Olive Drop color. I suggest using good precise brush. In my case it's a 2 0 brush from the Polish company Kozłowski with Kolinsky sable hair. If you are curious. I was curious where the name Kolinsky came from. It came from the marten, or rather its hair. Some people call this animal the red marten. In America and Canada lives the Kolinsky variety. In Poland it's called Kunakowonka. And in Russia, where they live most, they're called sable and the last name has actually survived. Sables have a very valuable fur precisely because their hair is very delicate and durable. The sable's hair are used in the production of exclusive brushes for painters and beauticians. But let's get back to chipping. It's a technique that allows us to make some scratches on the model. The easiest and most effective way to do this is to use a sponge. However, I decided to try chipping by hand, painting with a precise brush. It's more difficult and undoubtedly more time-consuming method, but it gives more control. What I can highly recommend and will definitely do in future, use other paints next time, 
probably acrylics such as Vallejo or Hataka Blue Line which are better for brush painting. For Mr. Color Paints it would be nice to add some retarder. As this is the first time I deal with chipping, the effect may not be phenomenal, but I treated this stage as a practice and definitely draw the appropriate conclusions. Chipping itself, properly made and balanced, gives the models an interesting look, making the impression of being worn out and more real. Personally, I didn't want to overdo it in this aspect, but on the other hand, the vehicle couldn't look like it has just left the factory. You can judge the effect by yourself. Meanwhile, I painted a little black camouflage on the front window frame and assembled the wheels. When applying the tires, make sure that the thread is in the right direction. It's true that the internal camouflage decals don't shine too much, but I decided to cover the entire interior with a matte varnish. I covered the wheels and the entire vehicle hood with a semi-matte varnish, protecting these elements against later works. With the airbrush warmed up, I also painted the machine gun and grenade launcher with steel color. After the paint dried, I was finally able to disassemble the hood and mount the internal equipment that I had prepared in the previous episode. So, I glued in all the lightning elements or shelves with ammunition.
The blue-gray paint grill didn't match the vehicle at all. I've painted it with steel and mounted using ultra glue. Finally, I pasted the tail lights, and this is probably the end of today's report. So, we are slowly finishing with our Tiger. The next episode will be the last in this series. Generally, there are several elements to assemble, and of course, weathering left. Summarizing this episode, I'm rather satisfied with the effect I got by chipping, but I also see a lot of room for improvement, so in the future I will definitely try to do it better. Meanwhile, I hope you had a nice time. If you don't subscribe to my channel, of course I encourage you to do so. If you like what I'm doing, please give me a thumbs up, if not, then of course down. I'm also waiting for your comments, I always try to respond. I invite you to the next episode on the channel, which will appear probably in about 3 weeks. Hang on and see you soon guys, bye!